The term Afrofuturism first appeared in an essay titled Black to the Future by Mark Deary in 1994, but its roots go back to a fateful night in the late 1930s in Huntsville, Alabama. On that peculiar evening, a beam of light shot down from the sky and lifted Herman Sonny Blunt into an alien spacecraft. On a voyage to Jupiter, his alien captors prompted him with a mission to transport black people away from the violence and racism of planet Earth. Sonny became Sun Ra, who worked on the other side of time. His songs were both far out and yet somehow familiar, a reaction to the trauma of black life in the United States. He believed no place on Earth was safe for black people, and who could argue otherwise? His spacecraft was his ark, his band was known as his orchestra. On his cosmic voyage came many earthly stops. A stint in jail during World War II for being a conscientious objector. The cover of Rolling Stone in 1969. Later that year, a concert in Egypt and a visit to the pyramids where Africans first looked to the stars. And in 1978, the orchestra performed on Saturday Night Live. Nowhere was the message clearer than in his 1973 film, Space is the Place, a movie that found Sun Ra recruiting Oakland's black citizens to join his space program. There are less than a dozen black characters in the entire Star Trek franchise, one in the original Star Wars trilogy and none at all in the Jetsons. It was imperative for Sun Ra and his orchestra to fly their own spaceship. Ever since the orchestra knocked at the door of the cosmos, black musicians have imagined themselves surfing the astral plane, travelling through space and time. The influence of this Afrofuturism has even found its way to Hot Topic, where you can now purchase a shirt that reads, Space is the Place. Sun Ra left Earth for the final time in 1993. What does it say about how far we have or have not come if this message still resonates with each new generation?